perspective. But going into day two for you, now you get another curveball, right? Like that's yeah. Well, and you know, so day two, I wake up, and even even at the end of day one, you know, we finally get back to the hotel like nine ten p.m. and Horrible. super late dinner, and we know we got day two the next day, but. When I'm at the dinner table, I I feel like I still haven't recovered. I still feel like my heart's beating quick. Like I'm I'm still, it feels like I'm catching my breath, but it's been an hour since I deadlifted. Yeah. And I'm there eating dinner. I'm like, what? what? Maybe I just need a good night's sleep. And I wake up the next morning and I don't feel like I slept at all. On the bus ride over to the convention center, I'm, I'm falling asleep on the bus ride over there. And it's like something's up. And I... I, I could feel like my heart was pounding, you know, like it, it, it felt like there was a little rabbit beating in my chest. Interesting. And so I'm like, you know what? This, this is a serious sport. I, I know how quickly things can happen in this sport. Yeah. I owe it to myself to like, let me at least talk to the doctors and make them aware yeah. that I feel like something's off. And so I went and I talked to the, the medical staff on hand. They, they hooked me up to some diagnostic machines to check my heart rate and everything. And, Lo and behold, I was in AFib, atrial fibrillation. My heart was skipping beats. And it, why it was skipping beats was totally unbeknownst at the time. But, you know, the medical staff at World's Strongest Men, I mean, the last thing they want is for anyone to black out or totally or yeah. even worse when they've got, I know we had log on that day. We're putting a yeah. massive log up overhead. Yep. If I, if I put a demand on my heart that's too tall of an order to fill, the lights go out and that thing comes down on top of me. I mean, we, we can easily be talking about a life or death situation. There. Absolutely. Yeah. So their biggest concern was my safety and they, you know, it, it freaking sucked, man. They pulled me out of the competition. Yeah. But, and, and I could, I can understand why, but so happy to be there. So ready for the trials and knowing that I have what it takes yeah. to make it to the finals. When they told me that, I mean, I remember I just, I just took I just took off. I just walked down the halls at the convention center. I mean, the the, the, the tears were coming down. Yeah, man, I, not a lot of people understand that level of commitment and desire, and you know, getting to that that level and then having that happen. Not a people. Not a lot of people have experienced that, yeah, right? right? And there's a lot of emotion that comes along with that because of what you've gone through to get there right. and now here you are you're on that stage and so you you get this told to you okay well we're you know based on you coming to us and saying this it's not safe we're pulling you out whatever where do you go from there well i mean like i said i was walking around the convention center to take a lap and to clear my head i mean just to deal with the it felt like a swift blow of a hammer coming down on me this news that they delivered i, I just wanted to make them aware like yeah. is there something they can give me is or just to like make them know like in case but little last thing i thought was they're going to pull me out of the contest so yeah you know i'm just walking away and i'm just overcome with emotion and just like the the, the waterworks and everything like that and then i just feel a hand on my shoulder and i i mean I'm, i've already walked like a good 500 feet away from the competition floor yeah i feel a big hand on my shoulder i turn around it's bobby thompson and he's there and he's just he was i just i just needed a shoulder to put my head on at the time yeah it was just it, it one of was one of those moments where like this is a guy who I know I'm going to consider to be a friend for the rest of my life because he was there for me in a moment where I needed sure. it the most. And it, it was a powerful moment. But from that on, you know, it was coming to terms with the deal. They, they sent me to the hospital, you know, riding in an ambulance from the convention center to the hospital there in Florida. Just, I felt so defeated, man. So yeah, defeated. I can imagine. Yeah. And they, you know, they get me there. I'm in the, the ER and they have me hooked up to machines. They've got IVs in me, loading me with medication. And I'm, I'm there still in my world's strongest man shirt and shorts. And it's like, I've gone from being surrounded with all of my friends with the, the, this elite group of athletes that I know I belong amongst. And now I'm just alone in an ER room or in a hospital room, yep. like w- lonely as hell, like knowing I'm missing everything that's going on there. And it, it really sucked. But yeah, once they got my heart rate to calm down, it, it, it had calmed down enough to where, they felt comfortable discharging me after staying there for a night. Okay, uh, that I was I was very adamant. Like I don't want to be here. Like you, yeah. you want me to be in a low stress situation. This ain't it. Like get me. <laughs> You're giving me anxiety. Yeah, this is worse. <laughs> like let me go back. I'm not going to be competing. I'm already out. But let me go back. I want to. I, I want to watch these guys. I want to support my friends. Yeah. Like Trey has been a 
like a brother to me. I want to see him. He he's qualified to the the finals. You know, yeah. I want to. Or uh, I totally understand that. Yeah. So they let you out. You get back to the contest, and obviously you you've gone through this. It's like this roller coaster ride. I can only imagine of emotion and and anger and sadness and you know it just all these things. I can I can you know hearing you talk about it. I'm putting myself in that position, and it's not a good position to be in. So, you know, you get back to the contest, uh, head back from there. What what was the reason behind it? So we didn't know the reason exactly. You know, I, I it was kind of like you're you're served up with this big monumental thing that went wrong. And like anything else, like any injury that happens that we face, you start taking the the I guess I call it the Sherlock Holmes approach, like seeing all the ways you can dissect, like all the factors, all the variables that could have attributed to it, you know. Yeah. I'm thinking that, okay, we've got all these changes and events happening. We've got a day that was spread out way longer than it should be. The meals, you know, like we were told we're going to go on at a certain point and it's been actually way longer since that last meal that we had that, and I had put on a ton of weight for the show. You know, I was walking around at 300, I think I weighed 333. Okay. Was the highest I measured going into that show. So this was the heaviest game that there has ever been, even to this day. And I was strong as hell, but I mean, I'm like, maybe I just put too much of an emphasis on gaining weight and not enough of an emphasis on cardio. Yeah. And you're trying to figure out all these things over the years, you know, maybe it was, you know, certain sugars I was taking, maybe it was mineral deficiencies, things that I had gone back with my doctor after World Strongest Man to try to figure this out because we cannot have it happen again. Of I will, I do not want to face a, a unfortunate occurrence of this happening in a similar situation where i make it to a high level contest and i have to pull out halfway through like absolutely and and i also know like the way that the world's strongest man medical staff works like if this happened again you know like my chances of being able to compete are even further diminished yeah you know so i wanted to get this thing addressed and so we're we thinking that we're finding these things you know maybe it's magnesium or taurine or maybe you need to gain too much weight like let's keep up with the cardio i was doing cardio with every training session yeah you know, at that point yeah, just yeah. making sure that the heart could keep up and it's been an ongoing uh ongoing thing to try to make sure that it doesn't happen again yeah. and even just this year so we're or i say this year 2021 late 2021 we finally found out with dialing it in with my doctor that it was nothing even close to as serious as we thought it was. It's not mineral deficiencies. It's not the heart being unhealthy. It's um, it's it's none none of these grave impending things that I don't I won't have as much control over. It's gonna sound weird, and no, and no one really knows this between you know me and my wife and my doctor. But I'm totally fine sharing it because. When I went through this at World's Strongest Man in 2020, I was open with it. I, I was putting out, you know, Instagram lives at the time, like yeah, letting people I'm know doing. what happened. And I had a lot of other people around the world reach out to me saying that they have chronic AFib or that they're dealing with AFib. And then, you know, they're, it's, it's refreshing in a sense to see someone at the highest level of the strongman sport going through this because they can relate to that and they can kind of... You know, how are you going about this? Or this is how I went. Like sharing yeah. the experiences, you know, there's that level of unity in it. And in, when you're faced with something that happens to your heart, yeah, there's that level of fear of unknown and that level of isolation. Like I've got something wrong with my engine, you know, and if, if something happens that I'm done, like that's yeah, in the worst case scenario, I'm, I'm dead. <laughs> and so when you have someone you can relate to who's pushing their performance to a high level, it's refreshing to know that there's that level of connection. So I have no problem talking about this, but yeah. I have what is called cold heart AFib. And it's a very weird phenomenon that if I have anything that is too cold, go down my esophagus. The esophagus passes so closely to that left ventricle of the heart. If there is enough insulated cold in that food or drink matter that's going down, it'll essentially cause the heart to shiver and send it into AFib and to where it'll correct itself over time, especially if I use medication to help yeah. correct it. But that's the trigger, Brian. 